abnormal and emergency procedures Airbus A320 engine failure during cruise. You may find the procedures core in the Flight Crew Techniques Manual, FCTM, Chapter Procedures, Subchapter Abnormal and Emergency Procedures, Part Engines, Engine Failure During Cruise. For more detailed information about the specific reason for the engine failure and how to deal, refer to the Flight Crew Operational Manual, FCOM, Section Procedures, Chapter Abnormal and Emergency Procedures, Part Engines. Engine failure is a critical flight situation that may occur anytime. Airbus A320 is certified for single engine operation. The worst scenario is an engine flame out at takeoff with maximum takeoff weight, MTOW. A320 at cruise is a well stable aircraft. It does not make engine failure during cruise less exhausting but gives the pilots more time to analyze what happened. Engine fail caution. The aircraft is in cruise flight. Autopilot engaged, all parameters stabilized. The master caution alarm is triggered. Pilots may see the loss of parameters on one engine. Air speed indication decreases. Engine fail action appears on the ECAM, and other related cautions or warnings may be triggered. The design of an abnormal or emergency procedure is defined by sequence of a memory items, when the flight crew has no time to refer to the electronic centralized aircraft monitoring system, ECAM, Quick Reference Handbook, QRH, or Flight Crew Operation Manual, FCOM, to ensure a safe flight path, or an Operations Engineering Bulletin, OEB, immediate action. When the flight crew has no time to refer to specific OEB actions to ensure a safe flight path, or a read and do procedure, handled via the ECAM, QRH, FCOM, or OEB. There are no memory items for the engine failure at the cruising level. Pilots will follow the basic rules fly, navigate and communicate. Based on the actual weight and flight level, we may find maintaining the present flight level impossible. The procedure which Airbus recommends in such a case is straightforward. As soon as the engine failure is recognized, the PF simultaneously sets all thrust levers to maximum continuous thrust, MCT, and disconnects auto thrust. Then pilot flying, PF, sets a heading and pulls and determines the engine out recovery altitude. When ready for the descent, the PF sets the speed and pulls, sets the engine out recovery altitude, and pulls to engage for open descent. When appropriate, the PF requires the ECAM actions. The aircraft speed quickly reduces at high flight levels, close to the weight limits. Thus, the flight crew should not delay to descent. The crew must not decelerate below the green dot. Explanation The auto thrust is disconnected to avoid automatic engine thrust reduction when selecting speed according to strategy pulling for open descent. With the auto thrust disconnected, the elevator controls the target speed. The ECAM actions should not be hurried as it is crucial to complete the drill correctly. Strategy As already mentioned, the priority is to stabilize the aircraft trajectory before taking any action on the engine. Airbus has three descending strategies to stabilize the aeroplane and prepare for the next steps. Those are standard speed strategy, an obstacle speed strategy and a fixed speed strategy. Standard strategy Set speed target Mach 0.78, 300 knot. The speed of Mach 0.78, 
300 knot is chosen to ensure the aircraft is within the stabilized windmill engine relight in flight envelope. The recommended maximum engine out cruise altitude, which equates to long range cruise, LRC, engine out maximum flight level, FL, with anti icing off, is displayed on the multi purpose control and display unit, MCDU, progress page. One engine out gross ceiling at long range speed is also available in the QRH in case of double flight management, FM, failure. When the vertica speed, VS, becomes less than 500 feet per minute, select VS minus 500 feet per minute and auto thrust on. Once established at level off altitude, Long range cruise performance with one engine out may be extracted from QRH. Obstacle strategy Obstacle strategy is also known as a drift down procedure. Due to the possible high terrain below the flight path, the drift down procedure must be adopted to maintain the highest possible flight level. The speed target, in this case, is a green dot. The procedure is similar to the standard strategy, but as the speed target is now the green dot, the rate and angle of descent are reduced. The MCDU performance cruise page in engine out condition displays the drift down ceiling. One engine out gross ceiling at green dot speed is also available in the QRH and FCOM. Fixed speed strategy the fixed speed strategy provides the strategy recommended by Airbus for ETOPS operation. A specific theoretical and practical training is required for this type of operation. When immediate action is done and a strategy is selected, the crew should start the ECAM actions. The first step of the ECAM actions calls for setting the engine mode selector to the ignition position and identifying the throttle lever of the failed engine to take it to the idle position. This action requires confirmation from both pilots to avoid reducing the wrong lever, taking power away from the engine that is in good condition. As in the previous step, the ECAM has automatically deleted the action performed, resulting in the next step. Setting an engine master switch to the off position is an action that requires confirmation from both pilots. The ECAM clears the action performed and results in the following steps. Two possible options are available. Continue the procedure considering the engine has been or has not been damaged. We should use the following indication to consider whether the engine is damaged or not. Lack of indications in engine parameters. N1 or N2 low value or nearly to zero. Green or yellow hydraulics failure. Engine low oil pressure, or excessive engine vibrations. Let us consider we deal with a situation of a damaged engine. The next step is to press the fire button of the related engine. We arm fire extinguishers by the fire button selection, disables the integrated drive generator, IDG, cut off the full authority digital engine control system, FADEC, and close the pack, hydraulics fire shut off valve and engine bleed. The ECAM clears the previous actions and asks for a fire extinguisher selection after finishing the 10 second countdown indicated on the screen. After discharging the extinguisher, all affected engine parameters disappear. ECAM replace them with amber crosses. The PM continues with reading the secondary system affected by the failure. The PM briefly describes each secondary fault page. The first is the bleed page, where the engine bleed valve is closed, and the corresponding pack lost. Pilot monitoring PM, asks pilot flying PF, 
to clear the bleed page and move forward to a lek page. The electrical system is affected by losing 50% of its capacity with the corresponding generator lost. Now the entire system will be supplied by only one engine generator. It is possible to activate auxiliary power unit, APU, and bring a PU generator into life right now. PM asks PF to clear the ELEC page and move forward to hydraulics page. The affected yellow or green engine hydraulic pump is lost, but the system is powered by power transfer unit, PTU, if available. PM asks PF to clear the ELEC page and move forward to status page. After all secondary fault pages are cleared, the status page appears, the PF order stop ECAM action. Before analyzing ECAM, crew always consider possible OEBs, systems reset or a normal checklist. The purpose of the status page is to overview the aircraft's technical status in all remaining flight phases. Therefore, the flight crew must check the whole status page information to assess the situation and make the appropriate decision correctly. When status page has been read and removed, the PM announces ECAM action completed. Information gathering Technical Single engine operation does not have excessive influence on the approach and land. All critical systems are well backed up, and all systems work correctly. A different situation may happen if the aircraft had already been operated with some MEL or a combination of faults appears. To refer QRH, FCOM and MEL may be necessary. Operational Current weather at alternate airports and remaining fuel may be critical for decision making as well as possible legal time in the air under the single engine operation CO, situation. Landing performance calculation is necessary. Commercial Suppose there is more than one optimal solution from the technical and operational points of view. In that case, it could be worth asking company operation control which choice they consider better for passengers and the company itself. After the FC gather and sort all available sources, it is time to evaluate the overall situation and options. It is recommended to use some acronyms, which helps not forget any vital part of the decision-making process. One of the often used acronyms is DODAR. The first letters mean D Diagnose O Options D Decisions A Actions R Review When the decision has been made and agreed upon by both flight crew members, it is the right time to inform air traffic controllers, ATC, in detail. Then the cabin crew, CC, should be informed. Some other acronyms may help with the briefing for CC. NITSA, the first letter means, N, the nature of the problem, I, flight crew intention, T, time to land, S, special procedures applied and required, A, announcement, who and when will do. After air traffic controllers, ATC, and cabin crew, CC, are informed about flight crew, FC, intention and at the right time, the PF ask PM overtaking aircraft control by the phrase, you have control and communication. Then he starts with approach and landing preparation utilize all information already gathered and base on the FC joint decision. The preparation is checked by PM and finished by approach briefing done by PF. We hope you always enjoy the procedure at the simulator lesson.